everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I briefly tell you my name is Mel. I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and on the side of my PhD I have this YouTube channel where I interview scientists all over the world. And today we have a very special guest. Her name is Lea. She's Canadian-Armenian but currently living in London and she's a psychologist but she's also the founder and CEO of her own company Brain Cycle in which she teaches emotional skills to children and their families. And she also was a fashion influencer and then a psychology influencer, which she still is. So we are not only talking about what she has done, like her journey and what her company does, but also that other side of herself and how this influenced her business, her academic journey. So we are also touching upon topics of women in science, perception of women and so on. So let's go with her. Hi, Leah. It's very nice having you here. Thank you so much for giving time for this. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Tell us a bit about your story. Like, where are you from? What did you study? I was born in Paris, in France. My Both my parents are Canadian-Armenian, and I grew up in Beirut, in Lebanon. And I did my BA in psychology. But while I was doing my BA, I decided to, well, start talking more about mental health and I wanted to do that through a blog so I started a blog back then called Clé du Bonheur which means key to um, to luck or to happiness in French and I started talking more about mental health, psychology, everything I was learning in my classes but at the same time I also incorporated um, some stuff about fashion and beauty just because I felt like it was getting more traction back then than when I was just talking about psychology and my audience grew and um, what I did after that was I decided to pursue my master's in child and adolescent mental health and at the same time I started my company called Brain Cycle which is essentially a startup that teaches children social emotional learning skills and it's something that you do with the parents as well because you know children uh, learn from observation and I think that it, it's a key component of it is having the parents do these exercises with the children when they're away from the classroom also um, and yeah that's my journey till now that is so amazing super interesting and I think it's a great idea to have such a startup because I feel like the number one thing missing in this world is emotional education, uh, emotional skills and so on so it's, it's really a cool and relevant topic yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's a ton of emerging research that's coming um, out that talks about the importance of SEL skills. And you know, when I was back in university, I was just thinking about how much we spend our time emphasizing on education, just being education in the sense that it's you know what we learn in school in terms of the curriculum and what's put in place. So things like biology, math, and all these things, which is great and it's very important. I'm not underestimating that but I think there's a big part of education that we're missing which you know is universal to everyone and and anyone because we're all human beings at the end we all have emotions and I think that a great thing to do would be to teach kids these skills from a very young age to be able to manage their emotions to understand others to listen more effectively I mean I'm 26 and I still don't have using listening skills you know <laughs> I think that it could be something that could eventually, hopefully, become incorporated in schools as well. And yeah, definitely. That's my dream. <laughs> because, you know, the more you think about it, the more you understand that these things are imperative to a child's development. It's not just about, you know, what they learn at school. It's These are things that they could use eventually in the future once they're adults. And I think that parents want to give their kids the best education. And I think that because there's so much evidence that's coming out now that this actually makes a difference in child, children's mental health, whether they're kids or once they grow into adults, I think that this will become more and more relevant. Yeah, definitely. I agree. This is really, really a cool topic and a novel project, I would say. <laughs> um, can you please tell us more about your startup? Like, what is this, the company about? What kind of services do you provide exactly? Yes, of course. So it's essentially a curriculum that I put together with um, expert child psychologists. So it consists of teaching children um, skills like empathetic listening, uh, mindfulness skills, and, and all the things that um, basically essentially make up 
what SEL is. And the way the classes are done is, so because I didn't want to move this into tech at first, even though tech is much easier to, to scale and to roll out, is because I wanted to test it and see, you know, what's working, what's not working, what the children are enjoying and what the parents are liking as well. And I decided to put together a class of six people just to start with and see the, how that's working out. But unfortunately, because of coronavirus, I had to stop. <laughs> So hopefully that's something that I will pick up once uh, the pandemic is coming to an end and we can gather again. But yeah, I, I mean, I've had a lot of good feedback from the parents and I've had some good feedback from the kids as well. I think that it's something really fun to do. And, you know, it's just 45 minutes at the end of the day, parents can come with their kids and, and spend some time with them as well. And then they can learn these skills, which are which they can use at home, which is also really important. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, where can people find more information like, or, or sign up for these workshops? So you can sign up for the workshop on my website. Okay. It's www.braincycle.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, or you can just email me, leah at braincycle.com. And it's cycle is PS, like psychology. Ah, uh, yes, sure. I also wanted to ask you a question because you mentioned you were a fashion influencer and you also did psychology posts, but you started with like makeup and fashion. And uh, I have noticed also that in science, like the women in science, they, they are expected to look a certain way and to not care about topics like fashion and science. There's a big stereotype about that. It's usually like looked down upon, which is it's terrible because people are like multidimensional. You can have different passions and different interests. You can also look super good and be a super smart scientist. Like it doesn't make any sense. So I was wondering if you had any effects on your academic and business career regarding this. Like did it influence in any way? Yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting question. And you're very, you're 100% right. It's very true. I think that you know, people often forget that human beings are, like you said, multidimensional, multifaceted. We can be interested in many different things and it doesn't make us any less than um, intelligent or any less than interesting, especially when it comes to pursuing what we want to pursue, which is, which is, in my case was mental health. I have faced a lot of criticism, but at the same time, I just remind myself that, you know, the, the world is changing. And I think that a very good example of this, which I was thinking about the other day, was that the image of a successful man is no longer a man in the suit. Haven't you noticed this? I mean, the more there are, no, I'm serious, because the more there are men that create all these tech companies and are, you know, founders of all these amazing startups, most of these men just wear hoodies. Yeah, true. So I think that with time, this will change. You know, I think that there will be more um, female scientists that are, like we said, you know, multifaceted, multidimensional, they're, which will not fit in the stereotype. And most women actually don't, if you think about it. And the more that we embrace our, our differences and the more that we embrace our uniqueness, I feel like this is how we will grow. And people will just have to learn that this is how, you know, scientists are. We don't have to be confined into a box. And this is my number one thing that I constantly keep telling people is just don't confine yourself into a box. The thing that makes you different and the thing that makes you unique is what sets you apart. So one of the the good things about, you know, being an influencer and having a platform is that when you want to build a business, it becomes very easy in the sense that instead of first building a product and then working on building an audience, what you can do is use your audience to test things out, to ask them questions, and then you sort of reverse engineer that to, you know, how it fits in with your product. I also think it's a really good opportunity to have such a platform and to be an influencer to teach all these nice ideas that you have about, you know, uh, emotional education, but also not only caring about the looks, but also about substance and uh, personality and mental health and uh, go after your dreams, regardless of how you look. And also if you do, look nice and or you like to look nice and you look, like to do makeup or you like to wear dresses that are, that's totally fine and that you can also be a bad scientist or a startup ceo and that's totally fine as well so i think it's really a cool opportunity it is it is i mean the thing with being an influencer or having a platform is it comes with a lot of responsibility and i think that this is where i've decided to actually move away from everything that has to do with fashion and focus more on mental health and what I'm trying to to teach young girls is 
especially when it came to a point where, you know, I was getting all these questions from 11 to 12 year old girls and I realized that my audience is actually really, really young. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be the influencer that, you know, encourages girls to use these products to feel better about themselves. I knew that it's something that comes from within. And I knew that this is something that we as influencers have to teach other women about. And if you have to choose one woman that inspired you, who would you choose? One of the women that really inspired me was my grandmother's aunt, um, because she worked in science and she actually worked on AIDS and malaria and she's published a lot of research, which were actually published under her male professor's names, which was quite common back then. And I remember being very young and, and looking at her and thinking like, oh my God, wow, she's a woman and she's a scientist. And I think that as an Armenian, you know, especially an Armenian woman back then in the 60s and in the 70s, that wasn't something that's very common. You know, women were would just get married, would have kids, would not have any aspirations or any, you know, career goals. And I think that this is something that really, really inspired me back then because it's just, it's so powerful. Yeah, and I think there's a, this situation happens in, in a lot of cultures. So yeah, I can relate totally. <laughs> in Latin America also happens a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. And speaking of which, I wanted to ask you if you had any tips, any piece of advice, any comments that you would like to give to any viewer that feels identified with this. Maybe they have a similar background as you, or I don't know, maybe they are young women, aspiring scientists watching. I don't know, do you have anything to say? Um, the one thing that I would say is definitely don't be you know, scared of being different. Where you're different and unique is actually your edge and you should embrace that and don't be you know afraid to, to try new things i mean i've tried a hundred different things before i decided this is actually what i want to do and that's fine another thing that i would say is persistence is so important and i realize this more and more if you want something and you believe in something then definitely just keep going for it don't stop no matter what anyone tells you no matter how many doors are locked in front of you just just keep doing it and you will get there Yeah, that's very nice advice. Thank you. And those were all the questions that I have for you today. So thank you very much, Lea, for being here with me to give time for this. No, thank you so much for having me. It's always nice to speak to other women in science and, and this was great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. And thank you for your attention. If you liked the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot to leave a supporting comment. I also have a Patreon account if you would like to make a monthly donation to keep this channel growing and make more content faster, better quality, etc. And see you in the next video. Bye bye.